Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 90. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. Oh, my neck. Fuck me. That was bad. But yeah, um, what was I going to say? You want a device to be updated for as long as possible. Um, for the sole reason that it works as long as possible. Because we're, we're in a world, um, even back when the internet first started, as soon as things get updated, everything else within the internet needs to update. Um, even if there was like a universal language, something like HTML, like we have all these universal languages that are simple for most devices to understand, but as soon as those languages get updated, as it can break stuff on certain devices. When you think, if you use an old, uh, what's it called? An old iPhone to try and load up modern day web pages, it will not do it. It will not load any of them. Because they all, all the languages have updated, but because the phone didn't get updated, the device that's supposed to read it, it just stops working. Um, and that's similar with a lot of things. If you think a VR headset, sure, the basic bare bones of it would still work. But you think if they update the um, Oculus software or whatnot to add a new feature, but that new feature breaks on the Quest 2 and it's only supported on, say, for example, the Quest 3 and the Quest 4 and the Quest 5, then your Quest 2 is irrelevant. It's not going to work. And they're also not going to put out a patch to get it to work for a device that's 10 plus years old, for example. So it's always better to have a newer device that's going to have that runtime when you're looking to buy a new device than to buy an old one. Obviously, there's no point in buying a new device if you've still got a working device. That's not what I'm saying. If you buy an iPhone, you shouldn't have to buy the every single iPhone just because Apple wants to throttle the device but should always be buying a device that has basically the latest stuff whenever you're buying a specific device no point buying an old shit because you're only going to be getting rid of it a very short while after buying it Which brings me on to my next point. Can we please fucking kill off the PS4? Like, the PS4 and the Xbox One. And the Series S. Let's kill that off. Get rid of that console. Honestly, Microsoft making a system like the Series S that is worse than the Xbox One X was a stupid idea. Fucking stupid. Oh, look, let's make a next-gen system, but make it worse than all the stuff that we've ever offered. How's that sound? Such a stupid thing. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Have you never heard me have this rant, Wolfie? Oh, fucking hell, you're in for a treat. <laughs> So, basically, when um, the Xbox Series consoles came out, they basically revealed a lot of games, um, but most of them were all like fairly simple 60 FPS games. They didn't actually have a lot of games on Xbox or PlayStation that were exclusive to the systems for quite some time. 
So there was no way to tell the performance benefit of having a next-gen system. So PS5 didn't really utilize the PS5 a lot until probably a year after it came out. Because then we started getting the new Horizon, the new, a new Last of Us game, a new Gran Turismo, new God of War now, which just came out a couple of days ago, new Ratchet and Clank, etc, etc. Et so a lot of people were just thinking, oh yeah, the Series S is going to be quite a good console, because it's tiny. You know, it's a next-gen system, they've got all this tech in it, and Xbox advertised the shit out of it. This amp something architecture, not Ampere, that's NVIDIA. Basically about their SSD speeds being like, oh yeah, we got fast SSDs. First of all, both the Xbox Series X and the Series S have less than half the performance of a PS5 SSD. So your loading time is going to be longer <laughs> on a series console. It's fucking stupid. Um, but besides that, the graphic, the graphics performance um, of the uh, what is it? The Series S is four teraflops. The performance of a PS5 is 10.44 teraflops, and a Series X is 12. Now, the Series X, I understand why it's got more, but feels like less because a lot of the Xbox developers... <laughs> fucking hell. A lot of the Xbox developers aren't that great at optimizing games for the Xbox platform. Um, it is a shame. It sucks. But it is what it is. Until they get better developers that are much better at optimizing... Oh, shit then we're going to have these sort of consoles that have more power to compensate for it. However, the Series S, because it has four teraflops, is less than the Xbox One X's six teraflop processor, like graphics processing power. So although the CPU is slightly more powerful in the Series S, a CPU... Like, CPU performance is fucking nothing in video games anymore. It's all graphical. Like, you can literally build yourself a gaming PC with a 4-core CPU. And a really good graphics processor. And it will perform the same as a PC with a 16-core processor with the same graphics card. To a certain extent. Like, for good graphics... You need to focus on the graphics processor, not the CPU. That's the point I'm making here. And obviously, when you compare the uh, Series X to the Series S, the Series S is... When it plays games, because of the fact it doesn't even have 16 gigs of RAM, it only has 12 gigs. So it's also got less RAM than the Series X and the Xbox One X. It means you can't play any enhanced versions of games. So anything that's been optimized to make it run better on an Xbox One X physically will not run on a Series S because it doesn't have the RAM for it. So you can't play X enhanced games on a fucking Series S. Even though it's supposed to be a next generation system, it's supposed to be better. So all your original Xbox One games are going to run exactly the same as if you bought it for your 2013 Xbox One your original Xbox One back in 2013. It's fucking stupid. It's why I... The only time I would ever recommend a Series S is because its form factor is so small. If you're using it as, like, a media box for, like, either for travelling, when you're going out and about, it's a good media box that can play some games on it then yeah it's a good idea for that but in terms of actual modern gaming it's holding back because when you think of it right the x the ps4 and the xbox series at uh sorry the ps4 and the xbox one they're all obviously older systems so while developers are being forced to make games for them 
they're actually having to hold back on like advancements in gaming just to make sure it can still run on old systems whilst also being on next gen um so until we stop developing like developers stop developing for the older systems um there's not gonna be any uh, as big advancements in gaming like you think when going from ps3 to ps4 the games were terrible on ps4 because they had to run on ps3 as well the ones that had to run on both systems they were terrible wrc5 for example like graphically that was crap on xbox one but because it had a xbox 360 version it was just terrible i'm pretty sure it had a 360 version if not i've just absolutely fucking embarrassed myself but i don't care my point still stands it's terrible until they move on to the next generation and focus on next gen like you look at games that are next gen they are completely better now coming back to the series s if you've got a console the series s that's next gen that performs at the same level as the last gen systems that series s is going to hold back the future of gaming big time what do you mean, what about FH2? FH2 would run exactly the same on any system. Because it only had one version of the game. So. But yeah, that's why I really hate the Series S and how it was advertised. Oh yeah, it was. Um, FH2 was slightly different though because they were made on two different engines. They were technically two separate games made on two separate engines, but that took a lot more development time for Forza to actually make that. Um, so that's the exception, but that is a problem. Because if you're having to make games for two systems and you're then making two completely separate games, that's extra time, extra development time for a much worse a game. So you either have to sacrifice the next gen game to make a last gen game run, or you make two different versions which sacrifices both titles. You know, it's, it's a really difficult thing. Very difficult. Um, Again, I'm not a huge fan. Like, I could rant for hours on it. It's just it's stupid. Especially when, um, when you think about it. The first... I, I'm not even going to, like, pause the recording. I'm just going straight into the next race. <laughs> okay, she's just going to fucking carry this rant on. Uh, when it comes to... Uh, what's it called? Next Gen Games. I think the first of the next gen games that they focused on big time was probably Horizon 5, I think. I think Horizon 5 was like the last of their next gen. Or the first of their next gen games that they properly focused on. Um, and when they announced it, they announced that the Xbox One X and the Series X would have a 1080p 60 mode or a 4K 30, which already went against Xbox saying that the game was capable of 4K 60 when they were announcing it. Like, oh yeah, our system's capable of 4K 60. No, it's not. You've just announced Horizon 5 is going to run on a Series X at 4K 30. So the Series X, when playing Forza Horizon 5, I don't know if they put patches afterwards. I really could not care. But when they announced it and when they launched it, the game ran at uh, 4K 30. It, the game basically ran exactly the same as it would on an Xbox One X. Exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. So already, that was a bad look on the Series X. But then when you look at the Series S, 
that thing played it exactly because Horizon 5 is available on an old Xbox One, like the original Xbox One. That game runs at 30 FPS at 1080p on an original Xbox One, which is fair enough. But it also runs at 1080p 30 on a Series S. Like, again, I don't know if they've put a patch out, but when it first came out, that was what it was running at. You think? Oh, look! Look at our next-gen system. Like, that's the one thing that bugs me about the Series S, is it's next-gen, but their last console does a better job at gaming than it does. It doesn't even matter if it's... Oh, look, it's $200 less. Like, it properly holds back gaming. And when you think, comparing a PS5 digital, which is 360 quid when it came out. I think the Series S was 250. So for an extra 110, you've got yourself a disc-free PS5, which has so much better performance. And there are people that bought brand new. This is the one thing that also confuses me. There are people that bought a Series S to put on their side to use as like a console by the TV, right? Which already is confusing enough as it is because why not just go for the Series X? But these same people would then buy an expansion card because they thought there wasn't enough storage in the Series S and they'd need more storage. So they're buying an expansion card for another $250, which is ridiculous, by the way, for storage. You can buy your, my one terabyte SSD and my PC is faster than an Xbox Series X's SSD. Out of those expansion cards, it's faster than that, and it costs me 50 quid. Like, they are proper overselling those expansion cards, big time. But even then, like, the cost of a Xbox Series S and an expansion card is more expensive than a Series X. Okay, sure, you're not getting one and a half terabytes with the Series X, you're only getting a terabyte. But at least you're actually getting a decent processor. Like, you're getting a decent graphics processor. A much quieter system, might I add. Like, the Series S, it just doesn't make sense. The whole system confuses me. Why would you get it? I mean, fucking hell, the Steam Deck is similar performance to a Series S. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. There are some games that run at similar graphics levels on a Series S as they do on a Steam Deck. And a Steam Deck is a fucking portable handheld. It just makes no sense. It's backwards logic. Would you ever... That's my rant done, I think. It took way too fucking long. <laughs> I can tell you now, I'm never getting partnered with uh, Xbox, that's for sure. <laughs> After absolutely shitting on it. Thank God I did not buy one, I have a 1S. Yeah, exactly. But people will still buy the Series S. Because they think it's a next-gen system. It's not. And I'm kind of glad that developers are starting to come out and say, like, this Series S is holding back game development. I think it's Arkham Knight. I think that's the game. That was the big one that really pissed people off. And obviously it's not the developer's fault. It's Xbox's fault. Um, the developers of that game, um, because of how 
Xbox runs games, you can only set a... I think it was you can set a version of the game for the original Xbox, an enhanced version for the One X, with, like, enhancements to make it look better, and then you can set a um, series version. Not a Series S and a Series X version, just a series version. Um... Actually, no, that wouldn't make sense. Maybe it was just the developer couldn't be bothered to develop two versions of the game. Which is fair enough. You don't want to develop two versions of the game for the same system, do you? Um, but yeah, they when they developed Arkham Knight, uh, they had to lock the game at 30 FPS, I believe. I believe it was Arkham Knight, or, or it might have been a different one, but there was this game that had to be locked at 30 frames because the Series S could not handle it. The Xbox Series X could quite easily do it, but the Series S could not handle 60 FPS. So they had to lock the entire game for both systems at 30 frames a second. Um, meanwhile, the PS5 version was obviously 60 FPS. PC was unlocked, frame rate. And it's just such a stupid thing. The fact that a next-gen system performs so bad that it, you are better off buying an Xbox One X than buying a next-gen system. It is so stupid. I know, it's ultra shit. But it's not the developer's fault at the end of the day. Like, the developer's done the right thing to be like, well, this game looks terrible at 60 FPS. We're gonna make the quality look good and lock it at 30 so you don't see any stutters or anything like that because at the end of the day a game that runs at 60 fps but stutters is always worse than a game that runs at 30 solid always uh they don't they don't produce it anymore which is kind of bad so when we're going to call the current gen consoles current gen and not next gen well, when you... So, it is current gen. Granted. But I don't... Uh, the thing is, right? PS4 and Xbox One are still mainstream. So, you can't really call them last gen until they completely die out. Because the generation still exists. So, I think once they start phasing out... PS4 and Xbox One. I think that's when we call it current gen and next gen. Or when we just call next gen current gen. You know. Like, it was the same with PS4, I think. We would call PS4 next gen all the way up until, like, it became the norm, the current generation. Like, at the moment, PS5 does feel like a next-gen system. Even though I haven't used mine in ages, and it's, you know, sat there collecting dust because I haven't played any games. Because i got a PC now. That bitch do it better. <laughs> but, uh, no. I would... Once PS4... And Xbox One die out, I think they'll then be classed as last gen. That was great timing, Zeno. <laughs> Are you ready for the roughneck base? Are you ready for the roughneck base? Are you ready for the roughneck base? 
Are you ready for the roughneck base? <laughs> ah, look at this next gen Xbox from 2013. I know. It's fucking stupid. But the thing is, a lot of news outlets don't seem to talk about it or don't seem to share the same hatred as I do for the Series S. I don't want to say they're not educated, but I think they're more than likely too scared of Xbox's lawyers. They're probably just like, if we say that it's comparable to an old generation console, they'll fucking hate us. Even though that's what it is. That's why we haven't heard many developers saying, oh yeah, the console's terrible to develop on. This is a tune, by the way. Like, this is top tier. <laughs> top tier music. Some of Skrillex's songs, like, Skrillex was fucking class back in the day. Like, that was good dubstep. The dubstep that I can actually listen to. And then dubstep became what it sort of became known as pretty shit. As soon as Skrillex stopped making dubstep. So. I don't know. Even artists like Knife Party that used to make shit tons of dubstep. Stop making dubstep. Are you ready for the rough net boost? <laughs> dubstep fell off harder than Joe Biden falls off bikes and upstairs. <laughs> Uh, I still don't understand why people like Joe Biden are president. He's too old. I even think Rishi Sunak, even though he's the like the youngest prime minister in the UK that's ever been elected, I still think he's too old to be prime minister. I think as soon as you hit 40, you should stop controlling countries. End of discussion. Like You're just too old for it. You're not in touch with the actual generation that builds this country and whatnot. It's just weird. Ooh, ooh. Nice. Right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, it said go. <laughs> It says go, proceeds to wait on the start line. <laughs> I think I used this for an outro song for quite a few months actually when the song came out. I heard it on Monster Cat because obviously I had Monster Cat Gold when this came out. I've had Monster Cat Gold for over three years now. It is, by the way, if you don't have Monster Cat Gold and you're a content creator, you're a fucking idiot. Because it is like... Okay, fucking idiot's a bit harsh. But it is a brilliant, like, music licensing company. They've got good music. And it just makes sense, because, like, you don't have to worry about any fucking copyright or anything like that. Like, that is nothing you have to worry about when it comes to Monster Cat. It's just brilliant. What was that notification? I got a notification and it came through on my watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, get back on the strike, you prick. Was kind of depressing, right? I have currently, I think I've got like nine job applications currently in the wild. That, um, what's it called? <laughs> you are a big twat if you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got not like nine job applications out in the wild, uh, and I haven't heard a single thing from them at all. Like, I thought 
when companies try and hire people, they'd be a little more on top of it. I don't know. I mean, there's ones that I applied to, like, two and a half weeks ago. Still haven't heard a thing from them. Which witch would watch the witches watch if the witch who watches the witches watch is watching the witches? Nice. <laughs> Never heard that when I got it right first time. Let's fucking go. You thought you would trick me? The other funny thing is, right, tongue twisters don't affect me like I can quite easily read a tongue twister no problem but when I actually try and talk just like normally my tongue's twisted all the time like <laughs> instantly my brain's just like I don't know what I'm saying Boom. oh shit I made up the witch one myself in year 8 and it confuses so many people in my class. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good actually, it's a good one. Which witch would watch the witches watch if the witch who watches the witches watch is watching the witches? See? Got it. Got it lads. Um, how much is Monster Cat Gold? It's um, it used to be five dollars a month when I started, when I first subscribed to it, but they increased the price to seven fifty about a year ago. Um, so it's seven dollars fifty, flat out. So whatever that is in your currency, convert it. So for me, it's like seven pound ten. Um, a man with autism and ADHD reads tongue twisters. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant, YouTube clickbait. Let's go. Ah, shit. I'm trying to type. That's nothing for that good music. I mean, when you think about it, um, because it comes with content creator licenses, it is a good idea. For actual, like, the price of the music, to be able to listen to the music, it's expensive. Like, when you think Spotify has pretty much all the Monster Cat music, and that's $9.99 compared to $7.49 for just Monster Cat music. Obviously, if you're just using it to listen to music, it's I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but when it comes to like content creation, it's killer. Like there's uh, what's it called? There's nothing else I can recommend in terms of music.
Keep it moving. Oh, the quality's better. Yeah, it's uh, waveform music, so I believe it's CD quality. So the quality is better. But like, if you're worried about quality, you just use Tidal. Like, the quality of Tidal is so much higher than Spotify anyways. If you're wanting to listen to music, so. Now my mouth is burning because I had some extra spicy chicken and rice that my mum made. It's harder to make it spicy because it isn't hot enough. It's my sister being a pussy when it comes to spicy food. I like spicy, but I don't like it too spicy that it just hurts. Um, as long as it's spicy and it's got flavour, like, if I go, ooh, that's fine. But if I'm going like, ah, ah, it's hot. No. No. It shouldn't, food shouldn't be that hot. And obviously, spiciness can be a different scale for different people. So it should be, like, personal to how you like spicy. Um, we had this, like, sticky beef kind of thing. It's quite spicy. Um, it was hot. You sort of bite into it and it'd be like, ooh. But that's just how I like spicy foods. I don't like it too much, but I don't like it not being there. If I'm having something spicy, you know. So... I've got all the things I want in my setup. I'm getting Tidal 100%. Tidal, fucking sponsor this man here. I'm getting you sales. <laughs> yeah, but... It's really, really good. Um, like, they do free trials. So, if you've listened... Like, get a free trial. Have a listen to it before actually buying it. Because some people might like how the app is, some people might not. There are a couple of nitpicks I don't like about the Tidal app that I prefer about Spotify. But for how much higher quality the music is compared to Spotify, it's just... The app could look like the YouTube Music app and I would still use it because of how much better the quality of the music is. Yes, I am shitting on YouTube Music app. It's terrible. I used it just because I had YouTube Premium, and when I had to swap to my iPhone, and my subscription cancelled itself, because I didn't have enough money in my bank one month, when it cancelled itself and asked me to repay for £16 a month, I was like, no, not bothering with that. Obviously, I know it's because of the Apple tax, but when I looked at the app and it was like 16 quid a month, I was like, nope, I'll just have Spotify, thank you, and I'll watch ads. Yeah. See, even me, a content creator, will watch ads to support. Apple Tax is ultra shit. I'm someone who believes that the Apple Tax makes sense. I think 30% is too much. But I think stores should get money for them hosting applications and sorting stuff out. Whether it's a trillion dollar company or not. Like, they're doing a service. Sure, it could get away with doing the service for free sometimes, but... When you think about it, like... I mean, Google's 12% that they've gone for is a much better number. Because I think Google Tax is now 12%. But every site, Steam used to be 30%. I don't know what it is now, but it used to be 30%. Uh, PlayStation is 30%. I think it's still 30% tax. Um, and this isn't just like actual like government tax. This is their own tax that they put on. The money that they take for selling you the product. But when you think like... Platforms like Steam and that, you buy an application, you buy a game, they'll let you install it forever. Until the site goes down. But like, you will have that game 
that there are games that they don't sell anymore on Steam. Like, for example, Grid Autosport. I can still go and download that right now if I want to. I already have done it, so it doesn't matter. Can't really install it twice. But, like, you can use that. So, it makes sense them charging that money because that product, you're going to be constantly downloading it. Like, if they did it for free, they wouldn't make any money. So, I understand the tax, but I think it is a bit steep sometimes. But, is what it is. Alright, let's get our rewards and I need to go downstairs and discuss what I'm having for dinner. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.